igloid.com. I'm going to look at uh, raw, uh, Fast Raw Viewer by Libra. These are the same folks who do Raw Digger, Monochrome to DNG, Pixel Shift to DNG, and some other cool uh, tools. Um, as a lifelong uh, computer software engineer, uh, I, I have nothing but praise for these guys. They are outstanding programmers who spare uh, the, everything. They, they think of just about everything. I, I have uh, no higher respect for any software developer out there than these guys. What does that mean for you as a photographer? It means that every feature want, you wanted is probably there. It means all the stupid shit that is in so many programs out there is probably not there. And that if you have a real issue, you're likely to get a fix within weeks, if not within days. Because I've asked for that myself. And um, it's just really impressive. So what does Fast Raw, Raw Viewer do? Um, in my previous video, I discussed whether you might be want to be a Photoshop user or Lightroom user. And one of the real bones of contention for me was the whole organizational thing, having to import and export and all that, uh, um, which is really at odds with my workflow. Um, when What a lot of people really need is just a very fast, efficient way to organize their images. And then they are going to process a, a few of them in Photoshop. You know, there's plenty of people don't do that and Lightroom is better, but in a lot of cases, even even if you are a Lightroom user, naming, organizing, and folderizing your images is a very good idea before you let Lightroom mess around with them. You certainly don't want to let Lightroom name and organize your images or you're in for a disaster of not understanding where they are or, or what the names mean. So if I want to just point out some things. If we go into the, um, if I can get preview to show up here. This is a part of the fast raw viewer uh, manual. It's an excellent manual. I'm go back to the top here. If you have nothing, no more time in your day today, take the time to read, read these pages two and three of the fast raw viewer manual. I'm going to hit on just a few points, but I think the page, pa these pages, demonstrate the incredible attention to every aspect of getting of a efficient workflow for professionals or amateurs. It, they just thought of virtually everything. Um, for example, you it, it's 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 faster than anything you've ever seen. For you just you launch this thing, you'll see everything comes up instantly. You'll be able to see the raw file and the histogram. You can therefore you can see if you got your exposures right. Um, you can, it supports just about everything. Um, display is instant as they claim. You can view JPEGs or RAW, TIFFs or anything else. Um, and it's smart. You move things around. It moves it moves pairs and related files around. Um, if you get more serious about your photography and want to really nail that exposure and get the most out of your camera, you can see real RAW histograms without having to use Raw Digger. This is so useful in understanding whether you're getting the shot you intended to get. You can outline in focus and out of focus, underexposed, overexposed, uh, uh, overexposed areas, um, noise levels. Uh, you can make adjustments right in the view in Fast Raw Viewer that turn into XMP files. Um, when you got panoramas, you can do you can automatically set things up for those. You you can do what I what is very important to me is moving selected shots into subfolders. So I shoot a panorama or some other grouping. You can't do this with Adobe Camera Raw. They don't offer it. It keeps suggesting it Adobe and it's like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? Use Bridge. No, hell no, I don't want to use Bridge. And they still haven't done it three years after I've started asking, but Fast Raw Viewer does. Um, if you're into like labeling things, you can have that done too. Labels and ratings and so on. There's batch filing. There's two and four window mode. Um, you can it'll warn you if you've got a damaged raw file. And Photoshop, Photoshop or ACR doesn't tend to tell you that. Uh, and so on. Um, you can even support black and white raw uh, for cameras converted to black and white. None of the, a lot of these things Adobe either does not do at all or does poorly or leaves things out or makes your life a pain in the ass. So I just want to call that out. Read pages two and three of the Fast Raw view Viewer Manual and, and you'll get a, a real good sense of um, what it can do. Uh, um, so next I'm going to um, just go through some things here and I was going to point out something. Um, 
you know, a lot of people like a grid. Some people like a, a, a film strip view. These guys have thought of everything. So let's get into the program now. So uh, here's grid view. If I type a G, now we're in this uh, film strip view. G for grid. It just toggles. Just about everything in, in Faster Reviewer is a single letter. No command keys. G for grid. And so on. Type some letter. I'm going to type a H. Okay. Uh, well, I don't remember them all. <laughs> I have just. I need to master this. But uh, like in view, if I want to see uh, shadows or highlights. Um, I can turn this stuff on and off. So let me pick a file that actually has some shadows or uh, highlights. Um, well, I don't even know what I'm doing here. But uh, let me do it this way. Boost, uh, I want to see highlights inspection. And that will actually change the image to see what you have in your highlights. Like here you can see that maybe this looks bl blown out. But um, let's see. Let's do the overexposure display. That's just O. O for overexposure. Uh, yeah, that's... That one's pretty uh, well toasted, overexposed. How about underexposure? Well, I did pretty good on underexposure. Uh, I probably should have let more underexposed and less overexposed. So right off the bat, you can do all these very, very useful things. Now, I might notice like down in the bottom of this film strip, I've got a, a series of folders. Obviously, this is a panorama. And so one of the big things I need to do often is select these five files. And I'm going to say right click and say, um, move to new subfolder and I'll say Pano Dana Lake. Uh, okay, and now these folders are in a subfolder. And that's something I can't do in Adobe Camera Raw. It annoys the heck out of me. How about this? How about the um, foolishness of having this whole huge list of all your, I mean, all, all your stuff on your computer and uh, you don't need to. You don't want any of this junk. It's in your way. You go into Lightroom or some other place. All this crap is just polluting your workspace. All I really want to go is into my workflow, work folder. So how about um, start folder tree at? Poof! All that crap disappears, and I can look at just what I want. And there's there's additional features around that. Um, by default, if you click on a folder. It just shows you the con immediate contents of that folder. So this clicking on this folder doesn't show you this, this subfolder, that subfolder, that subfolder, and so on. But there is a mode where you can actually uh, uh, open it in subfolder mode, and it'll basically recursively show you everything. So pretty much everything you can think of or want or mode you want to work in is there for you. Um, most of the stuff I've organized already, so it's it's been folderized. But one of the big values is is uh, folderizing folder isn't it for you now here's a tricky one I got a pixel shift stuff how to organize that I don't know I don't actually know if um if these guys have been smart enough to figure that out I got to give that suggestion and I bet they'll implement it basically I want each of these um, four series of four shots which is a pixel shift shot I want those to go in a like a subfolder together uh, you know here's f17 uh, I think I got an extra one there but anyway uh, I'd like it to do something with these, so I'm going to give those guys that suggestion. They can read that metadata and figure that out. So I guess they didn't know everything. Um, the uh, I, I'm just I haven't really become adept at this yet, but what I want trying to communicate here is if you're thinking about a, a bridge or Lightroom or Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw, it would be really smart to um, look at Fast Raw Viewer and before you uh, commit to one of those other programs, because it's instantaneous in bringing up your files for starters. I think if you look in the previous video with uh, Lightroom, it was glacially showed even to start to show previews even before it starts to import. Um, so uh, let's just let's take a look at some more uh, other things in here. I'm going to go into preferences, and I, I want to give you a sense of just how smart these guys are. So not, smart in the sense of understanding that real photographers need to do real things. They want to do them efficiently. And they don't want things to get in their way. So if you if you look at, at, let's say, file handling, you can start up in various ways. You can ignore network volumes. You can reset the folder tree. You can warn if RAWs are broken. You can do a lazy metadata read. That's part of speeding it up. You can basically configure every type of behavior you have. Maybe you have file extensions. You can say, I want their specialty. You just add them in a, in a preference. You don't have to wait six months or three years for Adobe to figure it out. Um, all kinds of things that configure that experience. 
If you're an XMP user, you can select all kinds of labels. Your interface, you can hide or show panels. You can control zoom levels, whether you do grid view and how it operates. The image display, you can do auto or manual things to make your life a lot easier in, in, in setting things. I am not spending any time on these because the point is that it just, they, they've almost thought of everything. Um, and if they haven't, I'm sure they'll add it if it's a reasonable request. And it uses the GPU and the CPUs extremely efficiently. It's, it's really impressive. Let's look at the menus. We can uh, switch to a single image mode, you can see here, with your film strip. And you type G and you're back. Very, very handy. You can um, go to full screen. You can uh, put a grid on it. You expect highlights, shadows, overexposure, underexposure. Do various adjustments. All this stuff can go into the metadata. Um, you can copy and paste settings. You can go to multi-window layout. You can hide or show panels, like maybe I don't want to see my folders right now to make more room. Um, you can uh, use a film strip or not. You know, all the, a lot of stuff is things you would have expected in other programs like uh, Bridge or Lightroom. However, they've kind of like filled in all the cracks and missing details and allowed you to turn off all the junk that you didn't want that got in your way. Um, I think if you use it, you'll you'll be really impressed um, at just how fast, if nothing else, it's, it's incredibly fast. I mean, this thing just comes up so fast. Like when I'm clicking on these folders, you can see there's no, there's no delay here. And these have not been pre-cached. Look how fast that is. It's like you already imported in, into Lightroom and spent the last eight hours working for these 3,100 megapixel files to render. These guys, these guys have already enabled, nailed it. There, I double clicked it. It's instant. I mean, it, it's just, just if you're any kind of working photographer who has to organize a lot of images, I mean that that speed effect alone, and you master the keyboard, um, you can learn to work extremely efficiently and and make your day shorter and more productive. You know, if you don't like a panel, like I don't need this this XMP metadata thing over here, just tight it. Um, exposure state, uh, stats, histogram, I, those are things I tend to use. Um, each one of them has um, various settings. You can turn it on, on and off. Um, it's just so much here that it's almost hard. To, you might say, well, this is, this is going to be hard to use. Well, not really. Your proper thought process when working with a well-designed program like this is to say, hmm, I want to do X. What would make sense in this context? And I can pretty much guarantee you that if you want to do X, they thought of it and there's a way to do it. And that's really the bottom line. And it's why I'd really recommend that anybody looking to organize their images efficiently uh, should take a really hard look at this program. It's, it's, it's clearly the best thing out there. If you're a bridge user and you mastered it, maybe you don't want to switch, but you should probably still look at it because I think you'll find it's faster and better. Um, anyway, that's a really quick, ad hoc, uh, pretty sloppy overview, but I hope it uh, hope it helped you um, get inspired to look at uh, Fast Draw Viewer. If you go to my website, uh, you can uh, and you want to read more about uh, some of this stuff, uh, go to, um, go to digloid.com and just type in fast raw viewer and it'll give you a page of all the articles uh, that involving software by libra the folks who make it you could just search for fast raw and uh for example this this post i did fast raw viewer saving me a lot of time organizing my shoots into subfolders um links to these guys and so on so uh have fun